This is her home, and it's also her place of ministry at Lighthouse. If you don't know that, she's our director and does an outstanding job. Let's welcome tonight Sister Sherry Espido. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to speak to everyone tonight. Um, uh, thank you also for putting up with my tennis shoes. I tried on my heels, and oh, they look good, and they felt so bad. And I thought, if I want to get out of bed in the morning, maybe I should just throw the pride aside and wear my New Balance tennis shoes. This is my daily attire because I do a lot of running around every day. Um, Sister Ina asked me to make this announcement. She says that the auction that is scheduled for tomorrow evening isn't. Instead, it is Sunday the 11th in the gym at 5 p.m., and you are to clean out your closets and your basements and bring five items for a spring auction, household items, garden items, homemade crafts. Yeah, I have none of those. Um, and all bids start at a dollar. So if you want to have a, be part of the spring auction on Sunday night at 5 o'clock in the gym, you want to do that. Unfortunately, my family has, has banned me from all auctions. <laughs> I, st I still have a bag full of Hallmark ornaments from 1992 that I thought would be a good deal. Yeah, not a... Not, not. Not a good deal. How are you doing, family? It's a pleasure to speak to family tonight, and I'm going to be doing some burden sharing tonight, and I hope you can go along with me. It says we should share one another's burdens, and I want to tell you right now, if you're easily offended, just go ahead and leave. But you can't be offended at family, you know, because we're just family. And I wouldn't ever intentionally offend anyone. A few weeks ago, I was speaking with a grandparent, and we were grieved together over the grandchild's behavior. And through the conversation, the thought came to me that our children are broken. We want them to act normally. We want them to do normal things. But they can't because they're broken. And the children are broken because their parents are broken. And sometimes I get kind of mad at the parents. And sometimes I don't want them coming into my office because I might smack them. But the kids are broken because the parents are broken. And I see little broken lives running around me all the time. And if you come and join my world for a day, you will see broke. Actually, you'll hear them. You will hear them. They're very loud when they're broken because they don't know what to do when they're broken. But I'm glad to report to you today that Psalm 147 says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Hello? He, are we going to have church tonight or not? He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Isaiah 61. Hold on, let me find it. Says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted. Anybody in here ever been brokenhearted? Some of you are brokenhearted right now. Some of you, God's going to put a new burden on your, you tonight, and you're going to be brokenhearted. I don't know where your brokenness comes from tonight, but I know where my brokenness comes from. And your brokenness, God is here to bind it up. He is here to heal it. His presence will pour in the oil and the wine into our brokenness. Sin breaks us. The world breaks us. Circumstances break us. But God is here to bring healing. Some of us need healing for our children. Some of us need healing for our grandchildren. But we need healing tonight because we are broken. So where are we going to start? This happens at least once a week. I'll be sitting at my desk and I'll hear the pitter-patter of little feet. 
but it's more like stomping. Boom, 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 boom. Here they come. Two or three of them. They come running into my office and they've been outside in the cold and they have their jackets zipped up and their hats on their head and their noses are running and their cheeks are all red. And they go, Mrs. Espino, blah, 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 blah. And I go, stop. Stop. One at a time and from the beginning. So we are going to start today from the beginning, Genesis 1 1. And um, I know y'all didn't know I was an artist. So I am going to display some of my artwork for you today. Genesis 1 1 is in the beginning, right? In the beginning, who? In the beginning, God. So here's God in his heaven. Do not be offended at my simple drawings. In the beginning is God. That's all we really need to know. In the beginning, God. In the end, God. In the beginning, he is there. In the beginning, he is the I am. He is everything we need and every, he provides everything that we need. In the beginning, God did what? Created. What did he create? The heavens and the earth. Okay, now here comes the challenging part. There's the earth. Okay, from God's perspective, there's the earth. I'm going to put a little tree here so that you know that's the earth. Okay, there's my little tree. That's my little tree. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everything came from him and everything flowed from him except evil. Because God is love and evil by definition is simply the absence of the presence of God. Because where there is no God, evil exists. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it says, male and female created he them. Now, when I was sitting in the, these pews as a little kid, who knew that by the time I wa I, my kids were grown, that that would be the controversial statement in Gen Genesis 1, right? We used to fight over, was, is it seven days or if, is it seven errors? I don't care. But I know that it says male and female created he them. Okay, so this is Adam right here. And this is Eve. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she said. I'll put a little skirt right there just so we don't get confused. We don't want to get confused, y'all. Male and female created he them. And then Genesis 1.28 says, and God blessed them. And he gave them in the garden, and he put them in the garden, and everything they needed was there. They had the animals, they had the fruit from every tree, everything they needed was there. And God said, but don't touch that tree. You have all the trees, don't touch that one. Don't, don't touch that one. You know, what, what I do in the evenings is I think about the beach that's what I, do, what I do in the evenings when I'm too tired to do anything else. So I get on Verbo and all of those rental sites and I look at these houses that are on the beach. And if it's like, says one minute to beach, forget it. I'm not driving to a beach and be one minute away. I'm going to be on the beach. So uh, I'm looking at all these houses and some of them have like 18 bedrooms and 10 bathrooms. Can you imagine the toilet paper stock you would have to have during COVID if you had 10 bathrooms? And they have movie rooms and they have game rooms. And I'm thinking, oh, that's so, they have an indoor pool. They have an outdoor pool. They have the ocean. I mean, I could live there. Can you imagine somebody saying, here you go. Here's a house on the beach. Stay as long as you want. <laughs> Happy days are here again. No children, just me and the beach, and I'm good. But what if the owner said, everything in this house is yours? We've got it stocked with food. We've got it stocked with everything. But that one room, don't go in there. It's locked anyway. Just We put our personal. Don't go in there. That one room. Hmm. You know, it's like police line, do not cross. You know what we want to do? That's what we want to do, isn't it? That human, we want to cross that. Mm -hmm. I've checked myself out in different stores. 
not at the self-checkout. Just because I'm standing there, you know, waiting to purchase an item and nobody's there. So I just start, I lean over. Hello? Sometimes I raise my hand and wave it. Still nobody. So then I just take my item and I start going, beep. Beep. And they go, wait a minute, you can't do that. You can't do that. And I'm going, I just did. Maybe you can come and do it for me. We like to push the boundaries. We're human. And we have that little bit of rebellion in us. So if the owner says, don't go in that room, that's the room I want, I want to go in. And you can, make, you can have 18 bedrooms and 10 bathrooms. You can have an entire garden that has everything you need. And God says, don't touch that tree. And that's the one you want to touch. Hello? Anybody here? Okay. That's the one you want to touch. But God says, we need to be aware of the devil's schemes, right? We need to be aware of the way he operates. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be alert and of sober mind. Why? Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Peter is saying, stand firm. The enemy is looking for someone to devour. Hello, Christians. Do you have your armor on? You better get it on because he's looking for a way to use your weaknesses against you. He's looking for a way to use society's weaknesses against us. Be alert. Stay alert. And you know the thing about the enemy is that he hasn't changed since the garden. He hasn't changed. He's exactly the same. He exploits our weaknesses. So the serpent comes into this garden where they are blessed and what does the serpent say? Did God really say? Did God really say, don't eat at that tree? Is that what God really said? Just the same as he says today. And Eve said, well, he did say that. He did kind of say that, so the enemy always attacks the authority of Scripture. When I am debating people online, which I love to do, <laughs> I'm sorry, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, I'm right in there. I'm right, let's see, how can I make someone mad today? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'll claim Jesus is Lord, that's enough sometimes. And, and they'll say, I'll tell them why something is wrong. And they'll say, God didn't say that. Jesus didn't say that. What do you mean Jesus didn't say that? Well, look at the red letters. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. Jesus never said anything about this, or Jesus never said anything about that. I'm following Jesus, and you're following Paul. Oh, where have we heard that before? First Corinthians. I follow Paul, another I follow Apollos, another I follow Cephas, and another I follow Christ. It's the same game 2,000 years later. They're saying to me, there's a canon within a canon. And if Jesus, we're only going to listen to Jesus' words. So if Jesus didn't say him, if Paul or, or John or one of the disciples or James, then it's not really scripture, so we don't have to listen to it. What they're saying is, did God really say that? That's what they're saying, and they are attacking the inerrancy and the authority and the perfectness of scripture. Go ahead to the next slide. The inspiration, that's the word I couldn't think of. The inspiration, the inerrancy, and the authority of Scripture 
The scriptures, both the Old and New Testament, are verbally inspired of God and are the revelation of God to man, the infallible authoritative rule of faith and conduct. And you can look up those scriptures if you want. That is at ag.org. And this is their the theological paper if you want to read the five pages on the infallibility of scripture. We believe that the scripture from Genesis to Revelation was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Every word was inspired in the original manuscripts. Okay, hello, anybody? Every word is inspired by God. And you either stand on Genesis to Revelation or you don't stand at all. You stand on Genesis to Revelation or you don't stand at all. And so, and there are people in this town who have told me, well, Jesus didn't say that. The heresy is right here, and it's heresy. And beware of the devil's schemes. So poor Eve, she's like, well, I don't, did God say that? I don't know if he said that or if he didn't say that. After all, love is love, and I just want, you know, that. But God said it. God said Anything, but don't eat of that tree. So what did Eve do? She ate of the tree. And when she did sin, entered the human race. Oh, I'm going to try not to knock this down. Sin entered the human race. And God used to come down in the cool of the the evening, and talk with Adam and Eve. He fellowshiped with them. But after they sinned, instantly there was a difference, and Adam and Eve tried to hide. You know, if you're doing something you got to hide, you're probably not doing something right. Hmm? Mm Mm-hmm. Moms, dads, grandparents, you checking the Wi-Fi where your kids have been? Hmm? You checking them? You better be checking them. Better yet, just take the devices, run over them. I'm telling you. So God comes down. Adam and Eve are hiding, and they said, we're naked. God said, how did you know that? And God had to take them out, drove them out of the garden. But God is so gracious that he made them coverings of animal skin, right? But he drove them out of the garden. So not only does God say... The enemy says, did God really say that? But the enemy also says, go on to the next one, God created me wrong. Look at what the serpent in Genesis 3 said to Eve. You will not, you will certainly not die. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The enemy told Eve that the that the, enem- the same thing, well, there's an error. Same thing the enemy tells our students today, that they're incomplete. That God messed up. That something is wrong. That God is hiding something really, really good. Right? Well, I, I, just, I just feel like I was supposed to be a man. I've had kids tell me this in my office at Lighthouse. Facts don't care about your feelings. Facts don't care about your feelings. Well, I really feel God messed up. That's what they're saying when they say that they should be something different or something else or they've got to have surgery or they've got to have puberty blockers or they've got to do this or they've got to do that. They're saying that God messed me up. God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't mess us up. God is perfect in all of his ways, and we are created in the image of God. I am perfectly and wonderfully made. I am God's beloved. I am precious in his sight. There is no one quite like me. Most of the world says hallelujah. And and God is perfect, and he makes us perfect. He does not make mistakes mistakes. So sin in our culture, the enemy tells us the same thing he told 
Eve 2,000 years ago, that is, did God really say that? And God made you wrong. So we'll fix you. The results of sin in our culture. Adam and Eve's results of sin in our culture, where there was blessing, there's now a curse. When God drove them from the garden, instead of blessing them, he gave them a curse. Because sin always brings a curse. And sin will take you further than you want to go and cost you more than you want to pay. I'm going to say that again. Sin will take you further than you want to go and cost you more than you want to pay. What are the results of sin in our culture today? If you take a look at this chart, this is just one of many charts. This chart is showing the rise of transgenderism in our culture. About 2014, you can see it start to rise. Sweden, one study in Sweden said 1,500% increase among females in the 13 to 17 year age group. 400% increase in the males, 13 to 17. They are buying into the enemy's lie that is as old as Adam and Eve. Did God really say that and God messed you up? Our kids are broken. They are broken. And we have to get them to the cross. We have to get them to Jesus because it's the only thing that's going to heal the brokenhearted. Is anybody hearing me today? Come on. Go to the next slide. This, this gentleman is in Canada. He is in jail tonight because he refused to call his daughter a son. Hello? He used the wrong pronoun and the judge said that that was violence against the family. The mother caved. They're separated. And the mother caved and said, okay, if she wants to be a boy, let her be a boy. The, the, the state is giving his 14-year-old daughter testosterone injections. They are making her sterile, and she will not recover. Now, I said I might offend you today. <laughs> and if I offend you, I'm sorry. But how dare they? How dare society tell our kids what the enemy told Eve 2,000 years ago? Let me tell you something. You better get your kids in church every time the doors are open. I drug my sorry behind here on Wednesday nights when my kids were little because I knew the enemy was after them, and the enemy is after your kids, and the enemy is after your grandkids, and we better start praying, and we better start praying like we mean it because it's bad out there. And if you think that isn't coming here, I've already told my family, if I end up in jail, send books. I'll take a rest. I'll pretend I'm on the beach. Maybe send, maybe send a bag of sand. How did we get here? Go, go ahead, Pastor Pete. That's for using incorrect pronouns. He's still in jail until his hearing. They denied him bail. They denied him bail. I'd go get the apple dumpling gang and we'd just pull those things right off of there and pull him out. I told you I was sharing my burden tonight. How did we get here? This is standard 1C of family life and human sexuality. I'm going to read this sentence. And I want you to tell me what grade level that's for. Recognize that there are different types of families, that is, single parent, same gender, same gender, intergenerational, blended, interracial, adoptive, foster, etc. Those are Maryland State Department of Education health and sexuality standards for our public schools that you support with your tax dollars. What grade level do you think that standard is for? Any ideas? 
pre-K four. Pre-K four. Look at the next one. Recognize a range of ways people identify and express their gender. What grade level do you think that's for? Kindergarten. Kindergarten in the state of Maryland. Go ahead to the next slide. Lennon said, give me your four-year-olds and in a generation I will build a socialist state. Now there are different, you know, um, quotes that are similar to that. If you want to know where all this stuff is coming from, why our kids are burning flags in the streets? You want to know? Go ahead to the next slide, Pete. Define consent as people of all ages and abilities having the right to tell others not to touch their body when they do not want to be touched. What grade level? Third. Third grade level. The next one, identify sexual orientation as a person's physical and or romantic attraction to an individual of the same and or different gender. What grade level? Four. You can start op opting out at grade four. Grade three, you're still in it. Define sex at birth, gender identity, and gender expression. Define it. We watch these people on the news going, well, that's their biological sex. That is not their gender. They can't know their gender when they're born. It's a boy. It's a girl. That's about it. That's about it. Male and female created he them. Everything I needed to learn, I learned in Genesis 1. Explain sexual orientation. Fourth grade. No, I'm sorry, that's sixth grade. Sixth grade, explain sexual orientation. These are all from the Maryland Comprehensive Health Education Framework. You can download it, you can Google it. And you can read it for yourself because there are some things in here for seventh grade that I will not repeat in this building. Go ahead to the next slide. Recognize racism and intersectionality and describe their impacts on sexual health. Seventh grade. Some seventh graders are 11. My tax monies, your tax money. You should see the committee of prestigious people who wrote this? Name after name after name of prestigious people with degrees behind their name. Why am I getting a degree behind my name? So I can stand up to these people who don't know anything about Genesis 1. <laughs> Thinking themselves to be wise, they became fools. Next one. Keep going. I'm sorry. I won't even take you into the high school either. You want to read the high school? 
It's up here, or you can Google it. I am broken. I am broken for our kids because I know it's here. I know it's in the community. I've talked to people. I know that in one of our high schools, and I promised myself I'd never talk about the public schools against them, and I'm not talking against them, but I will talk about against this. We have to do something. We have to take action. We have to start standing up. I know that in one of our high schools, from personal witnesses, that they changed a girl's name in the school without her parents' knowledge and let her use the boys' restroom. In Cumberland. Get your kids in our school. Get your kids in our school. And if you've got to work at Sheets as an extra job every weekend, get your kids in our school. Because in the long run, it's a lot cheaper. Hello? In the long run, it's a lot cheaper because we're going to tell them. I've already shown them this. I did this with middle high school chapel and I did this with elementary chapel. And I said, male and female created he, them. Don't get it confused. What's the solution to the brokenness? Luke 4, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are bruised. And our kids are broken and our kids are bruised and our kids need deliverance. Let me tell you something. You know what they found with transgenderism? They found that they... they the child who goes into transgenderism is six times more likely to be on the autism spectrum. They take advantage of the weakest. Hello? You think they're nice people? Oh, we're going to help them find themselves? We're going to give them puberty blockers and they're never going to grow to their full height and they're going to be sterile all their life and we're going to do this when they're 12? And the parents are saying, do it, I'll tell you right now. My kids ever say that my grandkid is going to be transitioned, I'm going to say, I'll see your butt in court. And if I have to, I'll kidnap them. <laughs> Hello? Hello, you got to stand up. You got to say it. You got to stand firm in the faith, faith and put your armor on. Our kids are broken. What are we going to do about it? Our kids are broken. You know what else? It was autism and something else I can't remember. But they take the kids who are most vulnerable. And they pull them in. That's the way the enemy works. Notice he didn't go to Adam, he went to Eve. That is nothing about gender, y'all. Just telling you, we'll talk about that next week. Anyway. <laughs> he heals our brokenness. Christ died. God had a plan. He heals our brokenness. Because on the cross, he broke that wall of partition and made a way. In John, it says, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way our kids are going to be healed from their brokenness is if they see the cross. And they know the Christ of the cross. And they know that his blood was shed for them. That's the only way they're going to know and be delivered from their brokenness. 
Joel says. Go ahead. Even now, declares the Lord, even now, even now, even now, where they're rioting in the streets and they're marching in the streets and we seem to have lost a generation, even now, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. And afterward, Joel says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days. Even now, return to me. Even now, return to me. Bow your heads with me. Dear Jesus, dear God, our children are broken. Our grandchildren are broken. Our society is broken. But you have promised that you'll pour out your spirit if we seek you. Come on, brothers and sisters. When you are praying, and it's a life and death issue, you might not be praying quietly. Put on some praise music, guys. Get up here. Come on. Let's get to the altar. We have a few minutes left. Do we? I don't know if we do or not. We do. You have a few minutes left. Get up here. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to weep between the porch and the altar. It's time for us to say there are kids and the enemy can't have them. It's time for us to say they're going to follow Christ. As for me and my house, we will follow Christ. And every kid at Lighthouse Christian Academy is part of my house. And every kid is going to be restored. And every kid is going to be made new. And every kid is going to know Jesus. Come on, 